Come on up. Tracy Redhead, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm on. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for that lovely introduction, Andrew. Uh, so I guess I just wanted to start by giving you a bit of background. Um, I am from Australia. Oh, no, I don't need that. No, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm from Australia. I've just moved to Austria in Linz. Um, so I'm new to Europe. Um, and... I come from a background of being a singer, songwriter and recording artist in Australia, um, as well as a project manager as well. And in 2008, I released my last album. And at that time, you know, things were changing uh, with digital music and I got really excited about the possibilities of what a new album could be. So I started down a completely different path and got a bit nerdy, <laughs> which I love. Anyway, um, so I was really interested in how to compose music um, for forms of music that are immersive and that actually involve audience participation because recorded music um, really is um, a passive consumption method. So for the last hundred years, people have been listening to music, but music is participatory. People play together and sing together, and um, I really like that part about music the best. So um, I'll quickly go over my approach. So I started back in 2010 and I was looking for what people were doing. And I found a few apps online um, that allow you to do multi-track playback. So the one I remember the most was Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, and you could turn the bass down or up or the drums, turn down the, um, the vocal. And I was really excited, and I thought, this is really cool. Um, and then after about a minute and a half, I was bored, and I thought, well, this is actually really boring because... And I was thinking, why is it boring? And I thought, it's boring because of the content. The content's been made for a fixed format. It's been made for a radio edit. Um, there was also some really good remixing STEM websites around at the time. And so I wanted to take this idea of remix culture um, as well and look at, I guess, making content that had no fixed version. Um, and I think this idea of a radio edit to me is one of the last biggest hurdles of the move or the transformation from analog to digital music. Um, production and distribution of music um, has completely changed, um, but we're still making music for a fixed version, which is a very sort of 1950s idea of capturing a moment in time. And recording processes now are not about a moment in time, they're about lots of moments in time um, altogether. So I thought I wanted to make music that's flexible and music that changes and music that's adaptable, just like music is. Um, if I sing a song every night on stage, um, it's going to change with how I'm feeling emotionally. It's going to change by who's in the audience and the atmosphere. So I made this app, which is here. Um, and I'm going to play you a bit of it. And what I've done is I've created an amorphous mix of a song. So the song um, sounds good no matter how you play it, but you can um, change genres within the stems um, and it still keeps the storytelling element that's really important to me as an artist. Um, I got the idea based from, I don't know if anyone's heard the dub track by Rhythm and Sound, The King and Queen in My Empire. Um, there's two 12 inches and you play them together on two decks and when you play them together it produces a beautiful track but each 12 inches a track completely within itself. And I took that idea as inspiration of how you could layer um, a piece that would sound good no matter how you played it, but could actually adapt into completely different genres of music as well. So I'll show you the app. We'll see if... Uh, I should check it's working. Do we have any sound? Aha. Okay, so if you can see there, um, these are all of the different instruments. Um, I'll just show you. Sorry. Um, so you've got a simple disco beat, a rock beat, an electronic disco beat, a break beat, hi-hats, um, you've got a, a deep bass synth, um, an electric bass, strumming guitar, um, finger pick guitar, 
strings. I'm going to ask someone to come up and play with it in a tick too. Um, Erhu, which is a Chinese string instrument. Ambient mix, melodic mix, electro mix. You have four different vocals. Really happy. Um, there's a backing vocal that's not on at the yeah, moment. And a third vocal, which comes at different parts of the song as well. So I'll just show you what it sounds like when everything's playing. So this is an example of an amorphous song. This is the second interface where you can change the volumes, panning and add effects as well. So I'll just mix a couple of different genre versions so you can hear them and then I'll get someone up to have a go at mixing the song. The idea is that the audience mixes, they press record here and they can mix an MP3 so they can actually create as many versions of the song as they like. Um, so you can have a very nice sounding Or you could have an electronic So basically you can hear a few different genres there. There was kind of an indie rock version, a breakbeat electro, and you can have ambient mixes, acoustic mixes. So does anyone want to have come up and have a go? Come on. I've only got a few minutes. <laughs> Excellent. Yay, thank you. Um, now there's a camera there so they can watch you. But you just press start and then you can just play. Now the reason that um, this looks like a mixing desk is um, because I was doing research and I wanted to see how people interacted with it and I didn't want to have to factor in interaction design because that was a whole new thing. So I wanted to see how people played with the actual music. really came about from doing lots of experiments and making lots of mistakes and realizing it's really hard to make a track that changes genre that everything sounds and works at the same time so it involved a really um, 360 approach to mixing and um, arranging as well and I just want to say that um, let's turn it down a little bit <laughs> um, that the idea of fluid music um, you can have tempo changes. Thank you so much for doing that. You can have tempo changes. Um, you could change 
um, the structure of the song, you could have contributions from the audience. There's so many different ways you could approach it and I really think it's dependent on the song and the artist and I think a lot of artists struggle with this idea of having fluid music because they're still thinking that a song should, should you know, be fixed. Um, so at the moment I'm exploring non-linear compositions and gaming composition software to experiment with different ways of composing um, songs in this fluid form. Um, and I'm making an album uh, which I want to release as different, different digital media projects so everybody has their own personalised version of, of the album, no one has the same copy. Um, so I'm new to Europe, um, I'd love to collaborate with anyone that would like to um, in composing in this format um, and using any software that anyone's developed. Um, so come and speak to me if you're interested in collaborating or if you're interested in finding out about how people interacted with this concept. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs>